What is up, y'all? Welcome back to 9to5Gamers, and today we're taking a look at Cthulhu Death May Die, which was created by Eric M. Lang, who created Blood Rage and Ankh and Rising Sun. Really great game trilogy. This game is no different. It is fantastic. Uh, but uh, as with most games that are a little older and I'm just playing them, uh, getting into the hobby, I'm just playing them for the first time. I'm not going to go through a crazy overview of the game, um, but basic gist of it is that um, you're going to be fighting against an elder one who, um, and you're going to be going through different episodes. There's about six that it comes with in the, the core box, as well as two elder gods that you can face off against. And uh, you're just trying to stop the ritual that the cultists are putting together and uh, stop the elder one from from uh, from existing and so it's it's a real cool uh, uh, game kind of like a dungeon crawler a little bit but uh, more so like a boss battler kind of uh, thing but let's talk about what I think about the game and again I'm not gonna go into crazy detail with showing you guys a whole bunch of b-roll just because there's plenty of other reviews out there you guys can watch those but here are my thoughts on the game setup and storage it's a lot of a setup if you look at this table it is taken up uh, by stuff. There's just a lot to put out there um, and uh, it does take a little bit to set up, but the setup is not too confusing because I feel like once you've played through an episode or two, you kind of get the gist of what you need to do. Not to mention that all of the episodes come with these little episode boxes where it stores all of the content you need to go through that episode. And it has six of those. So then you take all the content out of there, mix it with the general stuff, and boom, you're all set up and ready to go. So it just takes a little bit of a minor hit there. Um, games like this are always a pain to set up and break down. Um, as far as the storage solution goes, uh, it's gonna take another hit there, just, just a small one, just because CMON games are traditionally just are, especially the earlier on, they just kind of throw everything in the box and then everything fits in the box when they first pack it. But when you pop out all of the, the chits and all of these tiles and all the pieces, everything doesn't fit back into the box the way that it's supposed to. And I've always, not enjoyed that. I think the best storage solution for a game was has been Ankh. Ankh, everything fits back into the to the game box. Um, even though, no, not even. I had to do something interesting with that one. And I don't want to pay $50, $60 for a storage solution to make this game more playable. It just, it, 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 they are more, they're about as expensive as the game is. So um, it's going to get one point out of two. It's going to get one point out of two. Um, for setup and storage. The learn and the teach, fantastic. It's gonna get two points for that just because it's super easy to learn and super easy to teach. This game is not confusing in the in the slightest. Um, there are a couple of little rule questions every now and then where you wanna uh, look up in the rule book. Typically everything is always in there. Actually one question I couldn't find, I went to BGG, I went to the, 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 um, the forums to check it out and find an answer and they said it's on page 18 and I'm like, oh, okay, there you go. So it was in the book, I just couldn't find it. I just wasn't looking hard enough, but uh, rule book is great. The way the game plays is super simple to the point where it's very easy to learn and teach the game. You can actually teach it while you play the game and set up. Um, and then, uh, so set up, and, uh, I'm sorry. So learning and teaching is a two out of two. I love it. Um, let's talk about uh, artwork, visuals, everything in here is, co the component quality is great. You got these little fire tokens, tokens are great. Cardboard is high quality. It is really well produced there. Um, that is the one thing I like about the components. And then this right here is um, really, really cool. They, um, the, the miniatures are fantastic. Um, the, the, the people you play as are a different color than the enemies. There are enemies that are, um, uh, that come out from each episode and some cultists that you'll see pretty much in almost all the episodes. Um, but uh, it's just really, really, really good. I really enjoyed the uh, the the components of this. And um, you've got individual player boards with different player powers. And the cool thing about these player boards is that they've got these little tentacle markers, which you can't see, obviously. I'm not going to zoom it in too heavy. But... Um, the tentacle markers are cool because that's how you track all of your stats is with these little tentacles that are coming up out of the ground. Um, everything is great. I used to take off points when it came to like these flimsy, um, when they had like flimsy player boards just because I didn't like that. I was like, why not give me a, a thick cardboard player board, but those warp over time. And so it's kind of cool that they have these. But then again, these pieces don't warp. So I think there's a little bit to be said about that. I kind of did. This one warped a little bit. Um, so yeah, there's uh, no, nothing to be said. Component quality is great. Um, 
I don't know if it's a component issues per se, but the one thing I don't like is just how small everything is. Um, there's a perfect example like right here in front of me. I can't really zoom in too heavily on it, but, uh, but like there is one, two cultists and one of the disciples as well as the fire vampire as well as two fire tokens, a gate, one, two, three, four, five damage tokens all shoved into this tiny little square that's about this big. So this tiny little square has to fit all of this stuff in it. It is just frustrating. Um, I, that's the one knock about the components that I don't like. I wish the map pieces were bigger and fit the pieces better. I mean, look at how big this guy is. This guy takes up an entire space by himself and putting him in the same space as other characters is, it's just tough. So uh, that's the only thing I don't like, but again, it's just half a point, so we're at a 1.5 there. And then um, let's talk about gameplay mechanics. The gameplay mechanics are great in this game. Um, you uh, Basically, it's super simple. Your turn is all printed out on your player boards. So when you look at the player boards, um, your entire turn structure is put right here, and it's super simple. You are going to take three actions, then you draw a Mythos card, then you and you, if you're safe, you investigate. If you're, if there's an enemy in your space, they attack you, and then you resolve your, any end of turn effects that would happen at the end of the turn. Like if you were on fire, you got to resolve that, or if the elder one's been summoned, you got to summon it to the board, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Really, really interesting, and um, I like the the objectives that you have to do, where you're doing these different objectives and and trying to um, uh, solve these things. Because if you can stop the ritual from happening um then you'll summon the elder one and then you can fight it um now if the elder one comes out before you stop the ritual you still have to stop the ritual while this thing is out on the map and that can be problematic for you i like the gameplay mechanics i like the dice rolling some people say it's too lucky but there's so many ways for you to mitigate that there are people who have abilities like the high strung ability which when you roll dices uh, dices. When you roll dice and you roll like a tentacle symbol, it automatically counts that tentacle symbol as an, as, as a success. And so you can do damage um, with the star symbols, with the with the the the, the tentacle symbols. Is really really awesome. Like I think that there's plenty of mitigation to be okay with the dice. Then there's the stress mechanic where you can take. Um, stress in order to re-roll dice. So there's plenty of mitigation and plenty of ways to get away from all of that. Um, but yeah, so the, the, the turns are simple. You can run, which is just basically a move action that moves you three spaces. You can attack an enemy by rolling dice and doing a check. You can rest, um, which is really cool because you get to uh, recover th uh, three total uh, stat points, which is split between your stress and your health. So you can recover two health and one stress, or you could recover all three, just stress or just health. Um, and I love that flexibility there because that helped me out a lot in the game. Not to mention that you have the ability to grab items and characters that can take damage for you. Kind of reminded me of Marvel Champions because that's in Marvel Champions, the card game, when you get allies on the field you can use them to be like chump blocks so it's like if this thing is going to do 15 damage you know what just kill maria hill um and 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 they'll take all 15 points of the damage so that you don't have to take any damage you can use your people like that but they also provide really cool abilities um i like the uh, the combination of some items where you can get ammonia and then it says if you have bleach and you discard both bleach and ammonia you can literally throw this bottle of bleach and ammonia that when it explodes does like six damage to everything in, a, in an area. And you can do it while you're in the area and ignite yourself on fire or you can do it to another character. I'm not sure exactly why you would do that. It, it, it might be one of those things where situationally you may have to do that and that's cool because you situationally mechanically you have to sometimes sacrifice yourself i had to do that one point where it was like everybody's going to take like two or three damage but one character can take all the damage instead and and just be exterminated and i was like yo i'll do it because i had uh the, the rasputin guy who can literally die and then come back to life so i was like i'll die and then i'll come back to life anyway I wasn't too sure the rules on that if that's how that worked mechanically but it was epic when it happened and if that's not how that works i was going to sacrifice sister beth anyway because she was on her last limbs um but there was just really cool mechanics and really cool ways like um the kid i had the i was playing with the kid and um i was able to roll a few dice but then i got the pistol during the game with the kid and then she has marksman so she rolls like extra dice so it's like you roll three black dice but then you get two green bonus dice 
plus two green bonus dice for the pistol, plus two for the marksman, and then there was two extras that I had gotten from Insanity, so I rolled like nine dice, and I was doing crazy damage with the kid. Um, really cool abilities on all the characters. I think they're all really cool. They're not like completely asymmetric, but they have at least one ability that is. Um, mechanically, this game is a two out of two. I love it. The game mechanics, um, the way the gameplay is, I absolutely love this game. I love figuring out the puzzle of going around and saying, hey, I got to take this thing out. And I, you got to be super aggressive. You can't just play passive or otherwise you might die. Um, there's a lot of cool things to this game that I really love. Mechanically, it is solid. It's getting two points out of that. And then uh, for uh, the uh, fun factor and uh, uh, theme, fun factor, replayability. Whoa, that was a lot of lightning. Theme, fun factor, replayability. Is it replayable? Absolutely. It's got six episodes. There's a lot of replayability to it, not to mention there are expansions by now. There's at least two. Um, so, lightning? Okay, there it is. There's at least two expansions by uh, by the time you're watching this. That you, uh, one was on like Kickstarter not too long ago. So there's plenty of other um, ways to make this game last longer. But I think it's got tons of replayability out of the box and playing with different characters, different combinations, with different elder ones, with different um, episodes. Tons of replayability. I think it's great. Um, I also think that the fun factor. This game, I had a ton of fun. The only thing that I I knock against it is. The theme, I'm not into Cthulhu themed stuff. I'm really not. But I don't know. Maybe my mind is being swayed. Maybe I like Cthulhu themed stuff. But it is a little weird. Um, very culty. And it, it, I don't know. Some people just don't enjoy that style. I could understand that. So if you're not into like cult stuff, um, you might not like this game. I just see it as a bunch of monsters that you're fighting. And it was pretty interesting. Um, and so a lot of interesting things going on here but i think that ultimately if you're not into cthulhu you might not enjoy the game it's kind of like a horror-ish game like horror style game um so if you're not into that you might not like it but i think overall that's a solid 1.5 um for theme fun factor and replayability so with all things considered so with everything tallied up we're sitting at an eight which is enough to get this a silver lunchbox um so you get the Silver Lunchbox Award. Good job, uh, Cthulhu Death May Die. I actually can't wait to get the expansion so I can play this game a little more. It's pretty awesome, man. This is a great game. And if you like Cthulhu-themed stuff, please check this game out. It is amazing. Well, with that said, I'll see you guys later. Catch you on the flippity flip. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and check out our memberships because you get exclusive access and early access to videos and exclusive videos and things like that. So, anyways... It's getting kind of spooky right now with all the lightning and the thunder, so I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Check you out later. Am I out of the frame?